All right, what you need to know about SQL injection on the OSCP. Uh, I know this is a question that a lot of people ask, as we all know that uh, SQL map is not allowed on the OSCP or any kind of auto exploit tool involving uh, SQL also not allowed. So with that being said, do you need it at all? Uh, you know, what do you really need to know, if anything, about this vulnerability and how to exploit it? Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. Now, I've had this in the comments section many times before. I haven't really touched on it with a proper video. So I'm just going to tell you, uh, from my view, what I would say is, you know, if you know this amount, you will be good to go and you shouldn't really worry about this vulnerability too much. Now, uh, you could definitely get SQL injection on the OSCP. It is fair game that you might actually encounter a situation where you need to utilize SQL injection. But, you know, with that being said, you know, obviously the uh, creators of the OSCP exam, they know that you're not going to be able to use SQL map or anything like that. So if there is SQL injection involved, you know, it it's probably knowing the, knowing the OSCP and how the vulnerabilities on the exams are a little bit on the, on the more advanced side, a uh, difficult side compared to some of the real easy boxes you might be used to doing in lab environments. I would say that you, you probably will encounter, if there's SQL injection, it probably will be uh, slightly harder than the uh, OR1 equals 1 exploit. Uh, but with that being said, it's not going to be insanely difficult to the point that you would need uh, a tool like SQL map because obviously the creators know they can't use it, so they're not going to give you something ultra hard. Now... What I would recommend for you guys is just being familiar with the kind of exploits, the manual SQL injection exploits that they actually give you in the lab guide, right? Because I know they overhauled the lab since last I took the, uh, the OSCP, but I'm sure they still kept in there that SQL injection section and they showed you some like union uh, exploits using the, the union select and finding how many columns there are and things like that. And then, you know, things like that. Now, typically, what you're going to be dealing with will either be a MySQL database or an MS SQL database. Those are the two that I've found to be the most common uh, on the OSCP labs and on, you know, the various labs, uh, not even just OSCP, but also a lot of the CTFs that I've done, I've encountered those two the most frequently. Obviously, MySQL is uh, a very popular combination with PHP and things like that. And uh, it is, uh, you know, a free to use one. So I think that's why a lot of creators of the boxes use it. And it's very easy to exploit to get uh, RCEs and things like that. Now, particularly when it comes to the actual payloads that you create. You need to know in MySQL uh, how to do a file read, right? The into out file, a little hint for you guys uh, if you haven't used that. Uh, there, Basically, there's certain functionalities of MySQL and there's functionalities of MS SQL as well to do similar things where you're actually able to read files from the underlying operating system. So, uh, obviously this can come in great handy. Maybe you can extract some credentials they can use to SSH in the box, for example, or maybe you can combine this with a file upload to actually, you know, trigger, uh, you know, executing the file or things like that, right? There's so many different possibilities for it, but make sure you understand how to read files on the underlying operating system. And uh, I know MS SQL has a command shell option, so that's really good to know <laughs> for obvious reasons, right? You could get your code execution straight from there. So make sure that you know any uh, ability through SQL injection uh, on these database technologies that could get you a shell or it could get you read access to a file on the underlying operating system. Those are the two. So make sure you know, basically what I'm saying is make sure that you know how to do these things manually. Um, but I wouldn't stress out and worry too much about, you know, some of the more ultra advanced uh, SQL injection exploits you might have seen in videos and things like that. 
most likely it's not going to be anything too difficult, but definitely make sure that you know how to do these uh, manually. And if you don't, then definitely uh, check out the guide that they give you uh, in the OSCP labs and the, you know, the PWK labs because they, they do break it down uh, on how to do it. And also, you can check out, if you want some additional resources, uh, you can check out, I do, I do believe I have some videos on SQL injection on my channel, but definitely you can check out TryHack Me as well. They have some rooms in there where they really break down and explain it in the typical TryHack Me fashion, right, of how you can go about getting some manual SQL injection going. So, yeah, hopefully that was of help. And, uh, you know, if so, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button as well to help get that message out there. Thanks for watching this video. I will see you guys right over in some what you need to know for OSCP videos. If you're eager to just get going on this stuff and, you know, just keep learning. And I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.